Welcome to Applied Logic. This is the first class in the programming sequence at McHenry County College. We've brought in the Applied Logic class to help people succeed in programming. There are really two parts to learning to program. There's learning the logic of programming, all of the different procedures that we use to create programs, and then there's also the syntax of programming, where you actually write the code. This class is about the logic of programming, and we've separated the two to help people succeed in learning to program. The syntax of programming can be very frustrating. Imagine that you're writing an English paper, and it's 10 pages long, and it's almost perfect, and you have one punctuation error. You're probably still going to get a pretty good grade on that paper. In programming, if you have 10 pages of code, and you have one syntax or grammatical error, in it, the whole thing may not run at all. So by separating the logic of programming from the syntax of programming, we hope to ease your frustration and help you succeed. In this class, we're going to use Visual Logic, which is a program that will allow us to create flowcharts, one of the primary logic planning tools that you can actually run as a program. And we hope that that will help you learn to love programming and have a lot of fun with it. Why should you learn to program? Well, typically, you don't learn to program for its own sake. You learn to program because of what you want to do with it. But if you're looking at programming for a career, you may be looking at, how much money will I make? A lot of people start as programmers and then move on to be systems analysts or analysts, um, to do, be app developers, to be um, database managers. Programming is part of a lot of different degrees or a lot of different careers but it can also be a career in itself. As of December 2012 from salary.com, the median expected salary for a typical programmer is $54,981. That can again lead into other better paying careers. But really, when you're looking at becoming a programmer, what should be inspiring you is what are you going to create? Could you create the next Facebook, Angry Birds, Halo, or search engine like Google. There are a lot of really cool things that you can make when you learn to program. You might end up making video games, apps for handheld devices, the next office software. You might end up doing creating something that nobody's done before. The world is your oyster when you can learn to program because you can make anything. You're limited by your own creativity and the technology that's available. One of the key things that we have to work with as programmers, and it's also a program itself, is an operating system. There are two primary types of programs, operating system and applications. Operating systems handle the interface between the hardware and the user, and then they let you run the applications. There are desktop operating systems, there are server operating systems, there are operating systems for handheld devices. Um, some simple desktop operating systems would be Linux, which can also run a server. OS X, Mountain Lion, that's the Apple operating system. The iPod, iPad operating system is iOS. Then you also have Windows 8, which is blurring the line because Windows 8 will run on laptops, desktops, um, handheld devices like phones, as well as tablets. And then there's also the Android application, which is sort of going the other direction because there's Android phones, Android tablets, and they're starting to develop Android-based computer systems as well. So there's a lot of different operating systems out there, and typically when you're programming, you have to program for one of those environments. There's a long history of computers, and in future lectures, I'll talk about how programming has changed over the years. This is a picture of a very old computer system. They used to be a lot larger than they are today. And there's a story about how the term debugging came into computer programming. To debug a computer program is to remove errors so that the program will run. Story has it that the first bug to be debugged was an actual insect, a moth that landed on one of the computer's vacuum tubes. The programmer 
had to remove the tube with the bug on it and replace it to debug the program and let the computer run. Computers have come a long way. Back when I first learned to program, which was around 1980, I was about nine years old, you were programming on a computer sort of like this. And you'd store your data on a cassette tape on an actual cassette player. The first program that I ever typed in was a book from a book, and it was a video game. My best friend and I spent two or three afternoons typing in this code. This was the first programming I'd ever done, and we were just following the directions. And at the end, we had a little car game that you can control the car with the arrow keys on the keyboard. I spent about five minutes playing it, but I was hooked on programming and started to take computer classes whenever I could from that point. I hope that you fall in love with computer programming the way that I have. Today's computers have changed a lot. Where will your programs run? Will they run on the internet? Will they run on a tablet? Will they run on an iPad, Android, desktop? Everything's changing. I hope that you really learn to love computers and computer programming the way that I have. And maybe one of the apps I download in the future will be one that you created.